Hi everyone, I'm Scott Noonan, CEO of Audio Advice. This video is part of our home theater design series that covers virtually everything about designing a home theater. And today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to choose the best screen size for your room. If you want more information on anything covered in this video, there's a link in the description to our full article on selecting your screen size, as well as links to all other parts of our home theater design series. At AudioAdvice.com, you can explore all of our articles and videos on virtually everything home theater related, or even design your own home theater in our interactive home theater design tool shown here and throughout the video. Now let's get started. One of the most commonly asked questions we get is how big should my screen be? Well, the answer is usually as big as you can make it. If you want watching a movie at home to be the same type of fully immersive experience you get in a movie theater, the screen needs to fill up a good part of your field of vision. There are two groups that lead the charge in specifying what should be the proper viewing distance. One is the Society of Motion Picture and Theater Engineers called SEMPTI, and the other is THX, a Lucasfilm standard. For 16 by 9 screens, SEMPTI recommends about a 30 degree viewing angle from the screen, while THX suggests a 36 degree viewing angle. Increasing the viewing angle translates to sitting closer to the screen. We've had hundreds of customers sit in our theater rooms to determine what percentage feels right for them. Very simply, play an action film and have them change their distance to the screen until it feels right for them. If you don't live close to either of our Raleigh or Charlotte, North Carolina showrooms, no problem. We have a fully interactive tool on our website that allows you to virtually design your home theater from the ground up. I'd suggest watching this full video first so you fully understand the concepts, the math, and the trade-offs, and then going to the interactive tool in the description. It will easily be worth your time to invest the few minutes to understand the concepts in this video so you can choose the right parameters in the tool. Then the tool will guide you through some measurements of your room and will do most of the math for you. So you don't need to write down all the math in this video. You just want to conceptually understand it before working with a home theater expert or using our home theater design tool. In the tool, you'll be able to see just how big a screen you need as well as measurements for speaker placement and other aspects of your theater. So the first decision you have to make when you're thinking about your screen is what aspect ratio you want. And there's two primary aspect ratios. The one you're looking at now is 16 by nine. 16 by nine is the same aspect ratio that if you went into a regular store and saw a bunch of televisions, that's the aspect ratio. So for most people who come in and tell us, hey, I really watch a lot of sports and I watch mainly broadcast or cable television instead of movies, we tell them 16 by nine is the right thing to go with because this is what the signal for sports in most broadcast and cable comes in. If you chose 16 by nine and you decided to watch a movie, so I'll stop this and I'll jump over and put on what a normal movie would be. Most movies are produced today in what's called 2.4 aspect ratio. So if I went up over here to say Fast and Furious, and I went in and I said, let's, let's play a scene from that, you'll see if I do the race in Havana, it's gonna project a 2.4 image on top of a 16 by nine screen. So consequently, what you get are black bars at the top and black bars at the bottom. If you didn't want black bars and you said, I really watch movies most of the time, that's what I want the best experience to be in my own home, then you would go to a 2.4 size screen. So we actually sell in our higher end theaters, what you're seeing here, which is the ability to have both screens. It can convert from 16.9 to 2.4. But what you see now is we've taken that same picture and enlarged it, brought out the sides, and this is a 2.4 aspect ratio. So again, if you love movies and that's what you want the best experience from, you go 2.4, and then when you run 16 by nine, you'll have bars on the sides as opposed to the top. For more information on what widescreen is all about and why you would want it if you are building a high performance theater, check out our article at audioadvice.com that further explains widescreen. After you decide what aspect ratio you want, the next step is to measure the distance from the screen to your main seating position. If you have flexibility in where to put your seats, that's even better. 
Make a note of your distance and get out a calculator. For a 16 by 9 ratio, most people feel a 30 degree field of vision is perfect. For a 2.4 widescreen, a 42 degree field of vision is chosen most of the time. For those of you who like to get closer to the front row of a movie theater, a 36 degree field of vision is the best choice for 16 by 9, and a 48 degree for a 2.4 screen will be awesome. To get a 36 degree field of vision with a 16 by 9 screen, use your distance from the screen, convert it to inches, and multiply it times 0.746 to get the suggested diagonal size. So for the example of sitting 7 feet away again, you would need a 60 to 65 inch television instead for the 36 degree viewing angle. For a 2.4 widescreen, you use 0.83 as the multiplier. As an example, if you were sitting 10 feet from the screen, you would convert 10 feet to inches, which is 120, multiply this by 0.83, and that will tell you that a 100-inch screen would be perfect for a 2.4 screen. To achieve our suggested 48-degree viewing angle for a 2.4 screen, it's your distance in inches times 0.963. This means if you were 10 feet away from the screen, you would multiply 120 times 0.963, which equals about a 115 inch diagonal screen. A tip we always tell people who are planning on building their theater themselves is once you have done the math to figure out the ideal screen size, get some painter's tape and tape out what the screen or projected image size will be to see how it will feel to you on your actual wall. Just because the math tells you to get one screen size, you may prefer to adjust slightly depending on your personal preference. As you can see, to get that immersive theater experience, the screen needs to be pretty large. This is why most people opt for a front projector over a flat panel TV when they're sitting more than 12 feet away. As projector technology has improved, it is easier to go with larger projector screen sizes. The one caveat about a front projector is that you do need to think about its light output. Some projectors are not capable of lighting up a 2.4 screen larger than, say, a 150-inch diagonal. We have a whole separate article at audioadvice.com on projector screens if you want to learn more about what to look for when pricing them out. If you're working with one of our audio advice experts, either in person or over the phone, we will do the math for you and make sure you don't make any mistakes. There is a lot that goes into planning the perfect home theater, and after installing over 1,000 of them ourselves, we know that no two jobs are ever the same. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this is part of the Audio Advice Home Theater Design series of videos that cover all aspects of designing a home theater room. Down in the description, you will find links to all of the articles and videos, as well as our really cool interactive home theater design tool. If you have any questions or decide you'd like some help planning your home theater, give us a call or chat with our team at audioadvice.com. Or if you're near Raleigh or Charlotte, North Carolina, swing into either of our super showrooms and we'd love to help you out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss the latest home audio or home theater content. We'll see you next time.